John, you might get left. I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order in this county fiscal court. What time is it officially? 6.07 p.m. November 21st. We were going to executive session at the end of the regular court meeting. Per KRS 61.8101C discussions of proposed or pending litigation against or on behalf of the public agency. That will happen at the end of the meeting. We'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Is Nick Sipper in here? Yes, sir. Nick, can you do the pledge for us? The honor. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for the prayer. Uh, Jeannie, you'll lead us in prayer. Thank you, Father, for watching over our family, our friends, our elected officials, and all of our constituents within the county. Bless us with clear thoughts and compassion and understanding. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good preacher Jeannie. <laughs> I want to recognize, uh, first of all, tonight, and combine these next two, five and six together, but we have a recognition. This goes to make sure I pronounce all these fancy words here. Uh, Shannon Russell. <coughs> I can pronounce these words. Is it Kena and then K-E-N-A, A-P-C-O, PSAP Supervisor of the Year Award for 2023. And uh, she's with the Nelson County E-911 e -E Dispatch Center. So I will read this. So the Distinguished Service Award proudly presented to Shannon Brussel for your distinguished service to the E911 Dispatch Center and for being awarded the KENA. Is it do you, do you actually call it a word? Kena APCO, sir. Kena APCO PSAP Supervisor of the Year for 2023. Your professionalism and integrity convey your exceptional character and Fortitude. Every day you remain calm under pressure while aiding our citizens in their moments of the greatest need. Your professionalism while performing under duress in stressful emergency situations is deserving of recognition and for your actions. And you are awarded this distinguished <coughs> service award. If you don't mind coming up, uh, Shanna. To you, if you want to hold that up, don't cover the words up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some cameras slower than others. <laughs> Thank you. I thought they were Good job. Thank you. Sean, you want to say anything uh, in regards to that? So basically, you know, uh, there's a lot of PSAPs in the state of Kentucky, and you know, to be selected as the supervisor of the year, uh, you know, Shannon had to be nominated and go through the review process to be selected. And uh, you know, I think it was a great choice by KSC this year. Uh, obviously, I'm a little biased because she works for us, but she does a great job for this community. Uh, she's been with Nelson County Dispatch now for 10 years, uh, and like I said, she's uh, she's a great asset to the agency, and uh, I don't think we know what to do without her. So, uh, well served. All right, thank you.
Also tonight, I'm going to recognize an individual that um, has done a lot for this community. He's done a lot of service work, tons of hours of donating his time and uh, volunteerism. And uh, he's given back a lot and he served the country in the uh, service. So we want to recognize Nick Cipero not only for his service to our country and the U.S. Army, but also to Nelson County for donating his time and talents for the many, many volunteer organizations within Nelson County. And I could go on and go on about the committees he's been involved in or pointed to, the Rotary and on and on and on. He was deployed as combat advisor and commander to both the U.S. and Afghan troops in the fight against opposing forces. When Nick came back from Afghanistan, he donated the flag that was flown over his base in Afghanistan to the Nelson County Organization, Organization of Republican Women. With assistance from this group, Nelson County Fiscal Court is honored to now hang Nick's flag in the Bernard E. Ice courtroom. So please join me in thanking Nick for his service to our country and his continued service to our county. Thank you, Nick. up here yep. just back up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Nick, you want to say anything? I, I greatly appreciate the honor. You know, it's an honor to, to serve this community and be part of this community. Thank you. A little side joke, he's actually a Brody. <laughs> 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 I had to say it. Uh, I didn't know that was better one though. I had to but say it. But got it from Jackie Girl. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on. <laughs> Don't worry, Nick, we class the place up. <laughs> let's go through the, let's do the approval of minutes from the November 7th meeting. Y'all have time to review that, discuss it, any changes? No. no, no. No changes noted. Um, I'll make a motion to draft. Got a motion by Jeff. Second. Second by Adam. Any more discussion? All approved. Aye. Uh -huh. Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Bills and transfers. And there is a lot of them. There is a lot of money there. I believe it's the highest bill list I've ever seen. Yeah, we've well, we got that landfill project, and you got that big water project, and you got that big project in your district, unless you want to send some of that back. My district. <laughs> huh? <laughs> there is a lot over there. Uh, Roger, you put the additional bills, and you did the Budget line okay, item transfers. I emailed the additional bills earlier today. Hopefully, you got a chance to review those in advance. And, um, and then I did leave the budget transfers there on the table. Let's yeah. just kind of clean up some of the books here as we get through the first half of this fiscal year. So. We're in no hurry tonight. It's only 6 15. You can study them for a while if you want. I don't see anything out of order, but it's time. It's not a challenge for the next week, so I'll make a motion that we approve the bills and transfers as presented. Motion from Jeff. Second. Second by John. Any more discussion? One question to John. 
Is our tires empty out there now? Yes. The tires? Yes. Picked up? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the last load. It's basically what we did this year. It's different than last year for the tire industry. We hauled them to the bullet count. They said we, as long as we don't charge them. So everything we pick up in our bullet count service in the spring, mm -hmm. we keep those separate and we send them off to the bullet count. Mm -hmm. Didn't pay off. So that, that was just extra few loads that we had to we actually charge for. Yeah, yeah. Didn't at one time some of these companies pay for those tires? It was a long time ago for okay. <laughs> Yeah, they was using them in playground equipment and then they yeah. I mean, So you can't use them for playground equipment. They, but they used to. They used to. They brought that back a little bit. They used them like blasting mats. Um, they burned some incinerators and everything. I saved us a lot of money by hauling the bull cannon. Any more discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion <coughs> <Those are> carries. <coughs> I don't have any public comment. Nobody signed up for that, so. Jeanette, did you sign no, I wouldn't. Okay, I'm sorry. No, she did not. I'm sorry. I thought you were signing up when I walked in. I didn't want to face the wrath. Rhonda, do you have a uh, treasurer's report? Um, I just wanted to, well, I left a draft copy of a budget amendment that I'm going to ask for approval at the next court meeting. I wanted to go ahead and get that to you so that you can review it. You see that Keith in the front says draft on. Right. This one. Everybody yeah. sees that. Uh, yeah, he just left that on your desk for tonight. That we discuss it later. Something to review. Yeah. We'll Something y'all can look we'll over. We'll the next meeting. There may be some changes if there are. Um, yeah. I'll present a final copy for the next meeting. Um, but I wanted you to have that. Yeah. So it can spring it on you. This is for end of the year. Yeah. But, well, it just uh, we haven't done a budget amendment yet this year, so we've gotten some new monies. And I want to make sure that we've got our bases covered in case we have any unexpected expenses. If it changes before the next meeting, you'll see Correct. Yeah, I'll give you a final copy. <coughs> um, I also want to let you know that we did get FEMA re a reimbursement from FEMA for the windstorm back in May, or March. And uh, FEMA has paid us about $202,000 so far. And um, we're expecting a little bit more from the state of Kentucky, probably about 25000 That should be coming shortly. But we did get the FEMA reimbursement. Well, it was worth doing the paperwork in. Yeah. It was. What was the total claim, do you remember? Uh, 260000 Yeah. I know there was a lot of paperwork, but in the past, well, there was a lot of damage. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of damage. We got the as quickly was. Uh, yeah. We were all a little surprised. To, to clarify on that, yes. the that's not money that we paid out to citizens. No, that's for damage that's, to county property. That was, those were expenses that the county incurred for limb and tree removal right. and uh, trucks tree removal. and man Because we asked people to submit claims for yes. their own property damage, right. but that's separate that's from what separate. you're talking about. Yeah, this, this was county incurred yeah. monies. <coughs> This excessive above and beyond her regular daily duty, basically, is what it was. And she put the monthly cash flow report in there for y'all. You got that? Yeah, I got, I got, I got a question on this. I'm just going over this. There's a lot of, seems to be a lot of red numbers in, the, in this. And it looks like it all stems from uh, <coughs> not getting taxes collected. Is that, is that correct? Or? So, well, in the revenue. Going on? The red is it just I've not collected anything but right in revenue. So the red and the revenue is just money yet to come, right? What's so, the hold up on that? I don't care. There's just um, I I've been told I'll get a, a check tomorrow for property tax. Yeah. Let me answer that question. I've researched a little bit. They don't have to leave yet. You might stay married. <laughs> he didn't take his plaque. No, they don't take it. We keep it. Oh, you all keep it. Yeah. Anyway, back to that subject. There's been some um, internal issues in a couple of departments about the taxes, and I think they made that public at some point. The PBA and they overassessed. You remember back there when they did some of that? 
so I threw up some, uh, I'm gonna say it pretty simple, red flags, and they've had to do some reimbursements, so it kind of delayed. <coughs> uh, I checked on it today, and Rhonda was in uh, So we should be getting, receiving our, some money uh, probably the next day or two. Just, you know, I think our total general fund is, uh, our total taxes from the <coughs> property tax is about eight, nine million, and it rains. And, it gets it a cash flow pretty tight, but that's why I like it pretty tight because that way you know that we're not wasting any dollars. Let everybody know that. That's all I got today. Hmm. Ron, anything else? Uh, I don't have anything. No. Brad Metcalf, we're going to talk about uh, other than this code enforcement. You got anything else on your agenda right now? Uh, the only thing is, we got a, I got a email from Frank today on the, uh, the grant that we applied for for the uh, Veterans Park out by the Justice Center. Yeah. So they'll be making selections next week uh, to make the first cut. So hopefully we'll hear something about it. Now. Okay. So I'll have a drink. And under, under uh, Brad, I've got uh, I'm going to talk about that rotation list uh, a little bit on the record service. But it goes through the dispatch and it comes actually under the fiscal court, technically, legally. And uh, we do have a rotation list for the records that when they have emergencies, they call them out. And there was a question from some, and I've had this happen actually back when I was a magistrate, that <coughs> make sure their insurance requirements that would be covered and we're actually, uh, I don't know if they would actually cover us. Are we under their umbrella? Because uh, we've got our insurance to cover us, but we've got to make sure they're insured because, you know, they confiscate these cars or wrecks or whatever, and then you actually they may hold them for evidence or anything. So they, in the past, we've had to keep, we've mandated they keep $250,000 worth of insurance. And uh, don't know all these facts, but apparently some have not upheld that. And, uh, so we will make sure that if we got that policy in place, that we will make sure that uh, that's enforced. They either do it or get off the list. I guess that's kind of the way you say it, yeah. <laughs> Sean, Sean and I talked about that today, and so they come up for renewal uh, at the beginning of the year. So he's going to send that out this or in December. So we'll get them signed back up, and we'll make sure uh, we're going to look to in as well, make sure everybody's playing by rules and everybody's got what they need. Uh, I can bring that up to y'all. I don't know if you'll get that over there. It's not it's some internal stuff. And then the second thing I want to discuss briefly, I'm not proposing anything tonight, but I am going to be proposing something to you very, very soon. It's on the, uh, the code enforcement department and the building code. Now, we have a uh, inspection uh, program in place. It's been in place for 20-something years. Um, for houses, and um, then we have an expanding inspection program that was adopted, and our local inspectors can adopt, can inspect industrial, and now they can inspect schools, and of course inspect commercial, and all those are state mandated, but if we inspect them locally, we keep the revenue up, which really helps our budget a lot. With that being said, uh, in the past, uh, when you adopt that, uh, local authorities can, by my knowledge, you can add or delete some of what, what I call excessive inspections. You've know, probably heard me say this before, uh, about lean-tos and outbuildings, uh, tents are even in there. Uh, I don't want to get into the campaign thing, but I did campaign heavily on that. I've got a lot of data on that and I think it's an overreach. Somebody wants to put a lean-to on their barn uh, or shed. If you go out there to Lowe's and buy a shed, you're going to put it in your backyard and you're going to get it inspected. I personally think it's an overreach. So You have to do it only if it's over 200 square feet, correct? That's what, that's what the local, that's what the rule is today. Okay. Uh, it's not very big. 10 by 20. Mm -hmm. So, you can read this. This here just gives you some detail about the expanded inspection program, which is 
I think very important when you do uh, warehouses and all these industrial things, it does generate a lot of money for the county instead of going to the state. So Will that require any additional personnel? That's already been done. Okay. No, it's already been done. Uh, you can look at this. This is you can see the changes in this por portion of it. And then we adopted the one on the fee schedules here about what three or four months ago. And then this one is a separate one, but I might I'm gonna look into it. I think we can combine these into that one and have it all in one ordinance. And then when I when I send out my suggestion suggestive uh, uh, details on it, we'll have a discussion on it and yeah, it's probably a vote on it. See where everybody feels about about it. So what you scratched out is what you're planning on getting rid of. That's just in its expanded ordinance. The other one that we adopted earlier on in the year, oh, they had it all in place. We just changed the first <coughs> period to live. This is, uh, Brad, you want to comment on this portion of it? Can you believe the reason that there's two separate ordinances? I can't really say for sure, but I believe that when we went to the expanded jurisdiction, they created this separate ordinance by itself because all the other fees and everything else are, are in the one that we've already done. So the only thing is here is the creation of the department, the fact that we adopt the Kentucky Building Code and the Electrical Code, and then there's a couple of small fees that are in here. So I think when they added expanded jurisdiction, they were like, well, we're going to throw a couple of extra fees that weren't the other one in this. So I'm going to try to merge the two of them together. And, uh, and you can just see, I gave you a little <coughs> by, or a little uh, section by section, but just very changes to, to what the, the existing ordinance is. Uh, the only thing is um, really is, is section 5.2 where I've got the C CPI adjusted. That was actually already in there. It's been in there for like 20 years. We never, it was never actually imposed. Nobody ever went back and checked to say, okay, it needs to go from this to this year over year. And then just, it, that was one of the reasons why we had to come in and adjust the fees. The whole point was to put a put an uh, a CPI in there so that you could just do it a little at a time instead of having to make drastic changes, you know, 20 years later. Yeah, if you look at that, if you look at that, the one we adopted before, it had the same thing in it. This here is just updating this, this portion of it, basically, but I just want to share it with everybody and let the public know what we're doing, and then no action, like no action on this, and we're going to combine this with the other one, and then we'll, uh, we can, uh, We'll have open discussion on it. I would like to have this. Uh, we got two more meetings. Three more meetings. Two. We got two more meetings for January. Uh, two right. Four meetings. I want it. So anyway, I just want to bring it up for discussion tonight, and we'll uh, keep everybody informed on it. Okay. Magistrates, if you all redo this, if you have any suggestions, changes, anything, please just let me know. That way we can coordinate that for something. Probably change. in the next. Let's see, this is Thanksgiving week. Um, maybe Thanksgiving Day, I might call a special meeting and have y'all run. <laughs> <laughs> not enough notice days. Have us not show up. <laughs> you go ahead. It's an emergency. If you don't show up, I'll just do a, uh, what do you say, executive order. Can I do that? <laughs> it's oh, going to be a whole different kind of Zoom meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, now let's go to the jailer's report, Mr. Hall. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. <coughs> uh, currently, right now, we have 137 inmates, 24 females, 113 males, uh, 38 of those are state, 99 is county. State in inmate revenue per day, $1,342.92. Estimate of monthly is $40,287.60. 59 in circuit court, 29 in district court. Recidivism rate 80.77 percent. Average length of stay 89 days. Average length of stay felony 122 days. Average length of stay for misdemeanors 49. We're overpopulated by 34.31 percent. On males, we're overpopulated 20.21 percent, and overpopulated on females 200 uh, percent. Total inmate hours worked since the start of the work program, February 27, 17,347 hours work so far. At $20 an hour, that's $346,940. $15 an hour is $260,205. Uh, 
new boiler installed and operational at this time that we had to have an emergency expenditure on so we do have uh, hot water now and um, yesterday just want to bring up there's a handgun located on 31e by our inmate work group uh, they stopped what they was doing notified a deputy a firearm was secured by a deputy and taken to the nelson county sheriff's office um, i went ahead and signed a memorandum for the inmates that did that and sent to the department of corrections so hopefully they get some meritorious uh, good time award for actually doing what they were supposed to do so was it uh, loaded um it was actually i could not clear it because it had been sitting out there so long i could not physically get it to clear <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so so it's hard to say but we'll be on a little time yeah I, I left it I, I sealed it and then when we went on from there but I, I physically tried to clear it i couldn't get it to clear so it had been out there for quite some time um uh, and that's all i got yeah, that's good on the uh it is good. Yeah. That crew. How many was on that crew? That uh, three. Yeah, three on that crew. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but we appreciate that. I think that's some good from the court. Absolutely. And Justin, you might as well take this $15 an hour thing off of your exactly. Because we can't find anybody for probably 20 So. Okay, I'll do that. Need, uh, um, I'll do it. And then you got 137. So you've got. Uh, how many of these people are repetitive? Repetitive is 80 percent of them. 80.77 percent three people. 80. And that number had been ticking down. It was 74. It was yeah, it, it was, was 74. It's went back up. Um, we've had uh, a lot of repeats. Um, methamphetamine use. Well, they're coming home for the holiday. Yeah. So it's a <laughs> lot of repeat methamphetamine use. Matter of fact, I tried to get two particular inmates that had medical issues out of home incarceration <coughs> so that way they can go to their medical and they report to do drug screens and stuff like that you know i tried to do that and both of them violated this 24 hours and they're back to them so so these the question why i brought that up here is it's 80 percent it's coming back and back and back costing taxpayers a lot of money yes sir and the uh is anybody following up with the uh, district or circuit court the judges and trying to get them in the rehab Yes, uh, we're I'll following. See a place for that. Yeah, we've actually sent several to rehab. Uh, when we send them to rehab, well, I mean, you send them. Who sends them? Well, the court orders that we let them out and arrange transport for them to get there. Uh, we've had out of ten, and I'm going based just off memory. Out of ten that we've had go to rehab recently, I've already had three of them return already and dropped out, and so they got rearrested due to that, and. Um, uh, we are actually working with it, and we, we have a lot of people waiting just for trial or their case to be adjudicated, you know, uh, you know, so that we can get them, uh, get them through and actually get them into the state inmate. You know, we're hoping we can. So we need some improvement on that for sure. Absolutely. Well, you, you mentioned that um, something about the medical. So it seems like the on the jail fund, the medical part has jumped quite a bit. Yes. Is, it, is that connected? That's connected um, without getting into HIPAA and stuff. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just, I'll give you all a blanket. We've a had two or three particular inmates and I am waiting on reimbursement from the state for some of these medical expenses that have occurred. Mm -hmm. But we've had several cases that we have had to take on additional care because a lot of times I'll try to work with the courts and try to either get a home incarceration or I will try to get the state to get catastrophic refund for it but there we've had two inmates in particular uh, I have one inmate that I've been trying to get the state to pull in the last six months has severe medical issues I've already went to the legislator I've already went to commissioner DOC not our inmate state inmate they will not pull her in and we're stuck basically holding the bag until I get but I've already you just see the email chain I have just on this one email going every route that I can to get her where she needs to be so we're not incurring expense on it. What, what does that mean pull her in Justin? Pull her into actual prison to so take her out of the county jail put her take in. Take her out of the county jail and put her actually in the state system because she's a state inmate and I filed for this I filed for her to be pulled in because I saw where this was heading mm -hmm. six months ago. So if she's a state inmate shouldn't we be reimbursed that money? Uh, we are reimbursed the per diem the medical 
is our responsibility. On every state inmate? Now we can file for catastrophic and if somebody committed and without going into it, this person, this person without going into the specifics has to have a certain treatment regimen to keep this person alive. And it is outpatient. If it is outpatient, I cannot file for catastrophic reimbursement. Now, once somebody gets admitted into the hospital, from that point on, I can file for reimbursement of, some, of somebody that's been admitted. But this one right here, I'm doing everything I can to get them pulled in. I mean, I went to commissioner, I went to both our, our senator and state rep, and tried everything that I can. Well, why would they want them? Well, you know, I agree, but it's just one of the things that we're, we're kind of left holding the bag until I can. And I'm hopefully this month I can make something happen. I'm trying. We had another one too that he, you got, you got reimbursed for that one, didn't you? I got one that we're going to get reimbursed for. We're going to get reimbursed for. That was high. That was very high too. Yeah. Totally got, reimbursed? Yeah, other than $1,000. Yeah, $1,000. We have one on a, on a case right now that's going to end up total hospital bills are going to end up being over probably a quarter million dollars by the time it's done. We'll have to pay a thousand dollars of it, but it's going to be right at about a quarter million dollars of medical bills. But this other one, is, it's, we're not having any luck on it. Yeah, so, but we'll only be at a thousand on that one. It takes a lot. Anyway, anybody got any more questions for Justin? Move on to dispatch, uh, Sean. Uh, just real quick, I uh, want to recognize uh, we had a few promotions to dispatch to kind of give us more supervisory coverage on our night shifts and one on our day shift. Uh, one of the supervisors here, her name is Kim Ball. She's been with Agent for just over 22 years, almost 23. Uh, and so she's going to be a, she's going to be going from day shift to night shift to be a supervisor. And John Shadowan, who's been with the agency for total 13 years, and he's gonna be a day shift supervisor for coverage over there. We've kind of spread that experience out a little bit, put more experience with our younger, uh, newer staff. Uh, currently we are 12, full, we have 12 full-time employees and three part-time. We have four that are in the process of becoming part-time, but for each one it's about two months. So we really won't see the first one of those because he's done phase one, he's done fingerprints, and he's getting ready to do phase two. But phase two is not until December something. So uh, we're looking at, you know, it could be end of January, December, or uh, could be, you know, just depends. It's like about two months each person to get them through that process now. Uh, whereas we can just do it in a week before, and now it's two months. So uh, we did, I don't know if it's out there, but there is a, there is a little bit of a gray area as far as a person being called a call taker versus a dispatcher. In House Bill 3, 373, it does not say you can't bring on an individual as a call taker. So our plan is to bring these individuals on as soon as we can to at least train them on the call taking part and teach them other skills. And then once they complete, you know, the academy and stuff, we can try or all their phase one and phase two we can start them on the dispatching phase. So we're kind of giving them the, the meat to the potatoes to do the job. And then once they clear phase two, they can actually start doing the, the full job. So. You got a question for Sean? Oh, I got it. Thank you. Mike Williams report. Yes, sir. I gave everyone a copy of the uh, report. <coughs> We had a total of 685 runs in uh, October, 527 of those were billed, 158 were non-transport. Uh, that makes the total since July 1, 2,699 runs. Um, our uh, collection per run is averaging 395.42, cost per runs 588.78. Uh, which you, you notice uh, the 2022 um, is down a little bit on uh, about $20 there. Um, so a little bit better on that side. Uh, average m mileage per run is 18.16. Uh, and then there in the middle, the emergency scene responses was 514. 
emergency interfacility transfers from Flage was 12, uh, non emergency scene responses was 46, and non emergency interfacility transfers from Flage uh, was 113. And uh, as you always uh, inquire, lift assist are back to the, the normal six for the last month. Um, the previous month there were one, but last year in October there were 22. So still down um, from comparatively from last year. Right. But uh, I don't know if we'll ever completely get around in not doing those, but we are still getting assistance from well, the fire department. Yes. Yes. But that's still a lot. You're not going to get it down to zero, probably. But yeah. no. I mean, that's, uh, that saves taxpayers a lot of money. And then that 113 at the non emergency in the uh, IJ. Are they paid? Are they paid runs? It's a mixture. It depends on what their insurance, you know, what their other insurance. So, I mean, depending on what insurance is and what write offs are and what type of insurance they have. And really, when you compare, actual payment um, you're, you're about 90 days 60 to 90 days once it processes for insurance so it's not going to be on the same month when you actually pay for those so. but our revenue from um, uh, from uh, <coughs> amb is uh, 224,640 dollars um, for october so well, I want to look at that uh, that one line sometime if you can get that to me. See where we're at on that non-emergency uh, transfers. And some of those are just because the way um, they've changed some of the records and, and reporting and ability to access reports and learning the new system in ESO to build reports. So those are everything that is out of Flage. Um, so some of that's returned to the nursing homes and stuff too, but, but we do do several transfers out of county to other hospitals daily. And unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, one of them was me. So. Yeah. You feeling better? Yes, sir. Very good. Anybody got any questions for Michael? So you got to ride in your own ambulance. Mm -hmm. Was it clean when you got in there? Did everything yeah. proof, fast proof? They said the best one after you where are you at with your safes, Michael? Have you got them, got them ordered? Well, they are ordered. Um, I believe uh, confirmation on um, his last email request uh, should be should be December 6th. And then to them, and then they'll come and install them. Uh, well, we'll install them. Oh, you will in, in, uh, I believe uh, he'll be sending us the software and everything to download onto the server in this uh, prior to that. We haven't spoken to him All right, thank you. And then we've got uh, Mr. Pruitt's not here, is he? Michael, or, uh, Brad, you got his report? Uh, since our last meeting, the weather patterns are new getting involved in the Place, new control cabinets were installed, the final hookups were done and tested. So, all three of those have brand new signs, they're working, and uh, they've all been tested. Once we got finished with that, we had of course, a new angle. We had the old sign was on uh, the old fire department at City Hall. The new one is out at the new fire department, you know, a couple blocks down the road. So, Linda asked us if we could, if we would consider turning off the one on top of City Hall. This is just so loud. Uh, when we test it and then during the summer when we have it on. Uh, we kind of compromise with that and we, we're going to turn it off, but we're going to turn it back on during tornado season. Because even though the one's just a couple blocks up the road, if it's tornado, you know, we want to be able to hear it. Um, our sound fire department in conjunction with uh, EM is still doing, uh, we're going to host an ICS class 300, 400 in uh, January. That's for senior level emergency services personnel. Uh, if there's any agency that's got anybody that, that needs to take those classes, they can call Joe or myself. Um, Chief Spaulding uh, with the City Fire Department and myself yesterday met with um, uh, representatives from Salt River and from the City Electric uh, Department. 
one of the things that we wanted to convey to them was we've never really had uh, representatives from the, the from the electric utilities in our EOCs, uh, in our emergency operations command centers, when we had tornadoes or ice events or something like that. So it creates a bit of a, a lag, especially for fire departments and police when they're trying to get out to these places where there's either a, a tornado that's went through so that we know how to turn them get the electric turned off so that those guys can go in. So we talked to them and, and they, they had a little pushback at first because they're like, well, we want to get all our ground personnel out on the, out trying to fix things. And by the time we got finished, they agreed that they could probably put someone from their operation, maybe not a linesman, but someone that's familiar with their layout and their personnel in with our group so that we can help facilitate information coming in and information going out. Um, so that was a pretty good meeting. Um, we also worked with uh, LaRue County Fiscal Court. Uh, we helped get them some of the signs that we found in Madison County. So they got uh, some as well. And uh, we're going to have to help them. But for us, it was the same kind of siren we already used. But for LaRue County, it's a totally different operation. They're going to change their south wholesale. They're going to have a whole different uh, weather siren operation what they have now it's going to be the same as always so we're going to help them get that up and get it set up and the trade-off to that was that we requested that when they place their sirens if they could and both of us are going to do the same thing if we could put them in places where that it would benefit both counties along the road and Nelson County border because it was, there's a lot of areas that just don't have any coverage especially in kind of the rural and the far excesses of, of both counties <coughs> Uh, and then we also worked with, uh, we got the coroner's base station radio set up uh, today. Uh, I think she'll have the antenna and everything put up tomorrow. And we've got her, uh, her deputies equipped with mobile radios so it'll help they can uh, get to those guys quicker and get them out to the scene faster. So, and that's all I have. Judge, uh uh, what's his name? Luru County. Blake Dirt. Blake. He was uh, very appreciative of these uh, sirens because they, well, they just pretty much don't have very many, and they to get these at that basically no cost. I mean, that really helped that com uh, community out tremendously. Well, their western side, they're dealing with a huge influx of infrastructure and people because they're so close they're sitting right on top of blue oval so it's really changing the complexity of western blue again who's gonna get the recreation for john i will uh, so basically fall sports are over um they got the concession stands at the baseball and the soccer they got those painted they'll touch that up whatever's left in the spring they got everything winterized all the water shut off and the irrigation has been shut down and drained. And that's it for recreation. The, uh, the AEDs that I saw on the bills list for recreation, was that a replacement for those? You know, was sure. that new ones that they needed? Those, those are two mm -hmm. new ones two that we had ordered. Uh, the only reason we didn't put them up, they came in a lot and they were back ordered. So by the time they came in, pretty much everything had wound down. Gotcha. So we're keeping them with EMS until the spring, just keep them from, keep them inside, just keep them super warm. And we did get ours here. There's one right behind my courtroom. I'm um, on the wall, so we got one here in the building too. That's it for road. Do the road. Road department. So the road crews, they got everything delivered for the for voting day, and all the voting machines delivered and brought back to all the precincts. Um, asphalt patching, uh, I want to say thanks, they came out to the lane field, the actual place right by the scales where it was washed out real bad, they came out and patched that area. They also patched part of Keith Knob, Havy Church, um, going back to the Animal Shelter, D Head Road, Woodlawn Road, Hutchins Ridge, and Twin Oaks. I, don't uh, know, I, don't not, I do not own any of that, Hutchins Ridge. <laughs> Make sure you're clear on that. <laughs> point, point note. Uh, did some ditching work. Uh, it's all the driveway forward on Wilkerson Road for a homeowner. Um, finished up the cemetery curve project at Coon Hollow Road in New Hope. It turned out really good. Um, 
I had the new guys run the snow routes for the second time to make sure everybody was on top of that. They finished them up the right of ways a couple weeks ago for the fifth round in all districts. And the salt barn, um, that tarp has been replaced. Uh, the Highway 52, the hedgerow project, uh, the curb has been constructed, the asphalt base installed, and the temporary striping placed. Uh, they still need to do the culvert under the head road, the asphalt surface, final striping, and seed and straw, and additional signage. And it'll probably be about two weeks for that to get wrapped up. Now is it for a I went out and looked at that job today, and Brad uh, Spalding, he's been pulling his hair out. Yeah, much. Oh, well. He didn't have to. He didn't have to do it very long. He <laughs> talked about it because he's not here. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah, but it has been. Uh, anyway, there's been a lot of you know, several issues with that project that uh, should not have happened, in my opinion. But are they back to work out there again? They are. Yeah. They've got the they've got the base down and got it temporary striped, and it's going to be a great project. But uh, it's been an ordeal, to be honest about it. Should, should have been completed by now. Not blame, I'm not blaming the uh, people that's doing the work. But. And then Coonhaw Road down there, because that seems like he's getting all the attention for some reason, but that, that road has turned out really good. I went and looked at that today. The road department did that in-house. If we had to contract that out, it would probably cost us uh, another couple hundred thousand dollars, in my opinion, if you had privately contracted it out, maybe a hundred. Saved the county a lot of money. And it's a good project for that area for sure. Yeah. I got a real appreciative card from the cemetery crew thanking all of us for doing that. And when I say all of us, yes. everybody, uh, it was a real sweet card. I meant to bring it tonight and I forgot. Well, the father, uh, uh, Hardesty, is that right? Yeah. He's, uh, I've talked to him several times when they had to get the deeds and the right of ways and all that. And yeah, they're very. They were all very appreciative of it. Um, I got something on my mind. I got to write it down. I forget. It. <clears throat> Anybody got any questions on uh, for John for the road department? Let's go to the landfill. Okay, so our holiday schedule: we will be off Thursday, like we are every year, and we'll pick up Thursdays garbage on Friday and Fridays garbage on Saturday. So just we'll send extra trucks to try to get out early, so just have your stuff out as early as you can on those days. Um, expansion update, we got the liner in, probably 75% of it. Um, we got shut down because of the rain today, so hopefully it drives back out and get that wrapped up in the next couple of days, get that wrapped up. So it's move on very good, and very smooth, and I think it's working out very good. Um, they'll start hauling the pea gravel next week to get that going, so it'll be a couple weeks of construction left, and it'll take anywhere from two weeks to a month to get your final QAQC stuff to safe approved and hopefully late December start some garbage in so it's moving along very well. We discussed gravel. this earlier, but the pea gravel is used because of it's a drainage layer. It's still drainage, regular. Drainage and protection layers. So that's at the very bottom. So you have your liner at the bottom and on top of that you have a foot of pea gravel. So all the liquids but the pea gravel is used instead of regular gravel because of its shape or drainage properties or Yes. That's quite a bit more expensive. It's like yeah. a French drain. Yes, it's like a French drain, so you can't have limestone. You gotta this is okay. like a <clears throat> gravel. Yeah. You don't want to anchor so it scratch up the liner. Okay. Yeah, it cl basically collects all the water at the bottom. That's round, it gets around the edges. Yeah, well yeah, I just know it's it's, it's what's specified with the state. So basically it's one of those rules we have to follow. Where's the peak gravel come from? So there's a quarry, it's up the Ohio River, they put on a barge, and they ship down the Ohio River to Louisville, and then they basically filter it. It's actually it in a quarry? Well, they dig it out of the ground, yes. I think it's seams right. of that rock in the seams ground. Of but it it's, it's, all it's right there on the river. It's yeah. only certain uh, parts Milton, of the Milton, I believe, Milton. Yeah. It's about an hour. It's way more expensive. Yeah, it's way more expensive. Yeah, it's it's way more yes. Is it coming from Nugent? Mm -hmm. Is that who it is? They have another plant. That it's they got several in Milton, shit down on the bar, it's a little bit. None of us. Uh, so that you think that landfill is going to be, if it starts raining heavy, heavier than it has been, you think that uh, it's still, it won't affect you at this point much, will it? Mm -hmm. Because you've down the, you're not in the mud, really. We're down to the last little bit. So what it is, it's, it's built like a pond and there's a dam at the very end of it. We probably have 
Uh, not too much at the very end. Though. We got the whole thing done, complete, all the way to the last little bit of it, and we're watching the train come in. So it's called the penetration assembly, where your lead shape goes through the liner. So you have to put that in, and we didn't want to put that small pipe in yet with all the train coming in that we had today. Call for last week, so we're gonna wait. Hopefully, we'll start Monday. Get that put in, in a couple of days. Crew's really good, really efficient. Been happy with the work. The state came down last week to review what we got put in the line for so far. So we're good. Let's go good. All right, let's go to the engineer portion uh, of your report. Uh, one last thing with the landfill. With the bulk yard, when you get our bulk yard inserts in, we normally send those out in December. So the only question I have for that is, do we want to go the same route as what we did last year? Where'd you start at? So last year, have this if you guys want to pass this around. So we started, it's the Boston area, everything west of Coxon Street and north of Bluegrass Parkway. You started in Boston last year? Was that the first year of that rotation? First or second? Second. 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 Sorry, second. I think two years ago. Yeah, I didn't have any complaints. I, I didn't either. That's right. good. And we were always first before, so we liked being last. <laughs> There's advantages and disadvantages yeah, right, to right. either yeah. spot. So the only thing we flip flopped was New Haven stayed the same. So they started at the Coxes Creek Boston area, went to New Haven and circled around Horse Pass. That's what we've done the past I think, two years. It used to be the opposite. We used to start in Bloomfield Chaplin, then around New Haven, and then around <coughs> to the Boston Coxes Creek area. Do you want something on it tonight so you can go and get started? We can, but you guys are good with it. I'm fine with it. I'll second it. They want to send that out in December. So we can wait till the first meeting in December, whatever you guys think. We'll go ahead and prove it today. It's got my spice. You said it's a little second. bit, man. When you all get on it real quick, it must be bad for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's work two years in a row. You That's ain't right. had no phone calls, right. have you? No, no I, I'm fine with it. I'm just kidding. I know, you're just picking. That's the first time in mean, Boston's number one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, second place should be here. So you didn't. You second. Keith it. Made you didn't make a motion. Did you? Well, I didn't, but I will. Uh, I yeah. took this a motion. I'll, yeah. I'll make a motion to go and accept it and keep it like it's presented. presented. Second by Adam. Uh -huh. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. No. So this will get mailed out in December's invoices. Are you gonna give these Sorry. some of these to you have any extra on that stack? No. Here's some extra yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Here, pass them all over there. So this is actually last year's I'll update it for the new dates. This will be starting February twenty sixth for the first area, March eleventh and then March twenty fifth. I'll see email that out to everybody. Did Get we over. use uh, give her one maybe she wants to no, he wants one. Okay. We did mm -hmm. make cruise last year. Do you all want? But we didn't. Yes. But we Same, didn't. Just uh, like last year. But that was the first year that we've done that. Yeah, so. first year. Well, I want to expand that more because I want to pick it up quicker so we can get more done faster and uh, save us a lot of money. So we need more inmate crews. Looks to me like you got a whole lot of inmates, so you should be able to find more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll find more for you. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, sheriff's department's on it. We didn't say we wanted more inmates. We wanted more of them to work. John, I want to go to the. It's all out of it. Well, Matt, but I want to go to this field. Oh yeah. Is this the seat stand? Will pick up part of that or not? No, I'll get in that minute later. All right. Sorry. Got to hit it. Which one? What I've done now is we have the. I talked to you about it before. How many acres is it out there? 16. 16, 16 acres oh. and then our industrial park and it's an end next to, to uh, Woodbine Road and you know we've got the land we can't sell it unless we clear it and clean it up and the bid he had some discrepancy but anyway Bob Ray they did the other one the other track right same yes city. they did the previous two tracks track five and track uh, three they did a good job you definitely don't want to go six inches. You got to go 24. You might as well not do it. And uh, as far as cutting down below the grade, and seventy thousand dollars, and uh, the only way we can sell that piece of property is to get it cleared out. Will this cost be added to the property? It better be. Well, it's up to, it'll be up to y'all when I try to negotiate. Uh, we just need to keep that in mind when we start pricing. 
We do. We keep that on the Oh, yeah, that's adding $4,100 $4, an acre. Yeah. That's, that drops off toward the back side a little bit as it goes down to the creek. So not that's, bad, though. The biggest problem with that track is, if you haven't been out there, is well, it drops off to the back a little bit. You got about 10 well, to 12. Well, the kind of in the middle of part of it. Mm -hmm. 10 to 12 beats an acres, but the fire line runs right through it. It's a 150 foot easement instead of 75. Just make it easy to get power. Yeah, so the parking has to go in that area, just the parking lot and all that. We had a we had a uh, individual was interested in it and. Uh, it was if, if I had it cleared, I think probably could have sold it. And uh, anyway, it, it'll sell me. Yeah, the BIDC is in favor of it. We talked about it. The BIDC, Jeff. And so, you like the Bob Ray one that's the $70,400? Yes, possibly. Does that was also be something I would recommend using option B, which is clearing all the stumps 24, 24 inch, inch inches down. That's what we've done on the previous two tracks with Bob Ray Company for seventy thousand four hundred. What was the next one, John? Uh, John the next four? higher price was eighty four thousand five hundred from Ryder Excavating, and then we had a company out of Tennessee that. But this Bob Ray company is one that did the last one, and we had no issues with them. They were good. Oh yeah, they're a big company. Big they, they, they did a good work. Did a good job. Fourteen thousand dollars cheaper. You want, you so want a motion on I that? I would like to see one, please. Yeah, I'll make a motion we accept the, the bid by Bob Ray Company for seventy thousand four hundred. That's yeah. option B. I'll second. Motion from John, second by Jeff. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. John, anything else? That's all I have. You get, get back any questions for John? All right, let's go to the. Uh, I'm going to go to the phone system. I'm not going to say technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Right, uh, Justin uh, sent me an email today that uh, they're up and running with their fiber stuff. Uh, passed out uh, proposals from three uh, telephone service providers to John and and, uh, and Brad and, <coughs> and uh, Justin. And, we're going to go over and finalize them. I think we'll, we still want to start with a small sample, make sure we know what we're getting into. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big change. We don't want to do it all at once. Justin's got enough uh, uh, techno technological sense to exercise it fairly well, so it's a good place to start, I think. Brad showed me the fiber is installed here at this building, but it hasn't been transferred yet. We're still waiting on a couple of questions on when that's supposed to do, and then we can get rid of the old stuff. And uh, but we're moving forward. And if they got any questions, we can talk about it. We need to narrow it down, ask the questions we need to right now, and uh, move forward from there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm getting work since uh, fibers installed today. I tested it, everything's running great. So the next <coughs> project, which hopefully next week I get jump started on, is that I'm gonna beam that signal from the jail to power road department and the other building. So basically we'll have a, <coughs> a complete air mesh system, power and all, and we'll be able to kill three cable modems off one. Yeah. So it'll it, save us some money. Do you have any equipment yet? No equipment yet should have it this week. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. Let's make sure whoever is going to do this that we when we put the fiber on, we cancel the cable because it's going. To, yeah, I'm actually going to keep a picture of our modem today. Yeah. I just want to make sure everything was running fine throughout the weekend, and then I'm going to send it send it to Brad so we can kill those. Kill well, those don't you can still be paying two bills. Right, right, yeah. right. But you don't want to turn one off till you know the other one's working because. Let me tell you all the good news. <laughs> Is there bad news to follow? Because we don't. Uh, we were paying for a cable modem that we found in a long lost closet for three years. It was not being used whatsoever down at the jail. I got it canceled. So that's a good news. That's, yeah, that's, that's good news. But that, you know, just saying, it was it was shoved in a, a closet like <coughs> underneath one of. The, I mean, you couldn't even see there was a modem there. But once I ran the serial on it, found out we was getting billed for it. Three years worth. Build for rental or build for service? Build for service and rental. Well, I'm surprised to be none. There's a lot of things I've been hearing, but just leave it at that. 
That's all I got, Justin. Yeah. Thank you, all sir. Right. And then, Justin, are we hot here now? Are we live? Yeah, we are. Yeah, we Just to see that we're in, so we're under this category here that Justin Hall uh, put this new system in. We got a speaker here, all the speakers. Is that your speaker? That's, that's our speaker. He's got his own set up through here. Yeah. So tonight, what it's doing tonight, just sort of like right now, it's live recording to Zoom. Since this is a first um, test pilot, we'll be able to save it, put it on social media. The next meeting that we have, when they post it to social media, it's going to have a link, and then people can auto join in here if they'd like to as well. So we'll be doing it live, right? All the yeah. way through. Technically, it's live right now if we post the link, but. It's yeah. recording right now, so it's going. Nobody looks alive. Everybody looks sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Oh, no problem. Jeanette, you, you got anything? I do. First of all, I'd like to thank you and the road department for you allowing the road department to help us with our voting. I mean, it wasn't nothing that Chris and Brad said no to every time we called them they were right on it to help us another thing you guys got a press release about our motor vehicle department being closed down starting December the 28th that's gonna be our last day for motor vehicle only my office will be open for the land records and for election filings we have volunteered to be uh, the state is implementing a new system the, they've had a system for motor vehicle for 45 years so they, they're going to stop everybody from using motor vehicle December the 29th. They are supposed to go live January the 8th. Each county volunteered to come on accordingly. Nelson County volunteered to start January the 9th. We're going to try to have the public open, open to the public, but that's not saying it's going to work. I mean, this is a 45 year process that they've been trying to do since 2010. It's going to work. It's just going to take some so time. So you didn't sound very hopeful there. It, it, it's it's going to work. It, it's got to work because our other one is it, it's just it's outdated. Well, no, you shut down. I mean, you're down quite a bit. I guess because all, all of the time. Yeah, yes. you're down all the time. It's been a, it's a terrible disservice to the public. It, it is. You know, nobody's fault. But but I would like the media to help us get this out. All the magistrates. You're, you're going to get phone calls. The judge is going to get phone calls. I'm not going to get any. I'm taking off too that week. <laughs> I don't even talk, talk to him. I need some help, Brad. <clears throat> well, you, you're going to put that out on social yes. media so we can share it. And that, that should be a naturally it. slow period. You got it. Yeah. First of the year. Usually, no one will come in at Christmas week. time, but they're going to come in and say, My tag's been expired since July. Yeah. John, you got that right? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have people that. in to explain them, you know, what's going on, and my building will be open. No motor vehicles, no handicaps, uh, no, no nothing, no boats. The only thing you're going to get done is election, business, and records. Make sure Carol puts this on. Yeah, she's going to call me. She does all that. Right. Right. I think that's it. And if I, as I hear more, I'll get with the judge and let him keep him aware of what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Did everything go pretty smooth at the election? Election, yes. Yeah. Are you still using space in St. Monica or is everything all in one room? St. Monica's gone. Gone. Yeah, all in one room. Good. 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 Yes. And, and good. the city's awesome with that. And that's what, yeah. yeah. Good. Good. He gave us keys. We've got the lawn. We don't even have to call him anymore to come down oh, there. Oh, good. So good. He said we can have it as long as we need it. Good. Thank you. Man, Sheriff's report. No report. No report. Raymond is. Out of town for a few days. Daniil here? No, he's not here. No report. County Attorney, Mr. McKay? I have no report. Magistrate, of course, John? <coughs> I got nothing, sir. Jeff? No, sir. MT? No report, sir. Adam? No. Keith? Just one. I'd like to wish Nelson County a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, sir. The uh, let me see, make sure I don't miss anything here. Uh, I've got one thing I passed. 
Everybody got this on the dead animal? Mm -hmm. Just for y'all to look at and research. I know it was a hot topic back during some campaigns and everything. Uh, I asked John, see, he, he's one keeps up with this stuff. When you really put the true numbers to it, it's a very expensive program. Now the, uh, we have the, uh, I think the Farm Bureau and there's three or four agencies that's donating money to this program, which is great. Well, and then that public fund has also come from the ag, the ag development. So 32,500 is offset from other sources. Yeah. It's cost us 104,000 and 32,000 of that is paid for. So it's cost the county taxpayer about 70,000. This is round it off. Is that right? You agree with that? About, yeah. uh, I'm not proposing anything, but I want y'all to think about it. Uh, there's a lot of other counties that they give out, uh, uh, just by like the Sociedad they picked up and they get the free passes in the landfill. Marion County, some of these other counties do that. Um, it's a good program. We implemented it, implemented it years ago. Again, I actually had an official report when we did all this, and then... Uh, well, I wrote the grant, the original grant, and I've won the approach this report with that. The cost is, uh, like everything else, is, is going up a lot, so... And you know what these trucks and everything cost? And, uh, that that truck, that ticker truck, how old is that one? It's, it's fairly new. A couple we, years old. Yeah, because we now. got to help get a grant for that. It's for 2011, I was just... This that's over, yeah, that's over. I've been here seven years and it's been here several years before that. I think I'm pretty sure it's still below. Yeah. But no, there's something for y'all to think about. I'm not going to, I'm not going to propose anything, but I want y'all to discuss it. Yeah. My best uh, scenario that I like is if we can go after and get some more of these people to put up more money. You know what I'm talking about, Adam? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to do is we go away for some of these programs. I mean, how many programs do we have that are third funded by private sources? <laughs> I like a little more than that. Okay. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind too is the environmental impact of this and how it affects yeah. the overall quality of life in Nelson County. It's a, it's a big deal. It's very important to the rural community. Yeah, I agree uh, with you on that. I have a question on that. When, when you list that as salaries and benefits, does that, is that, so is there somebody that we have an employee that's dedicated to that particular program? That's all they do? Okay. Yeah, he drives that truck full time. I mean, Five days a week. Mm -hmm. That, keeps, hours him, a week. that well, keeps him busy. Uh, we, it's, the number is over 2,000 animals this past yeah. year. Right. So and the breakdown, uh, cattle are less than half of that because that includes the animals from the, from the uh, humane side of the pound. And then you've got Very deer on county good. roads, deer on county roads, and then horses, horses and llamas sheep, and alpacas goats, and goats and pigs and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. What John's going to do, he's going to get a detailed report. I just want to share this with you tonight. He's going to get a detailed report together for me. And it's going to break down every little detail. Yeah. And it's going to show who's using it the most. Because in my opinion is you've got uh, several, well, I don't know opinions, facts. You've got a few that's using it a lot, and a lot's using it very little. So that's something to just think about. Are we going to have another discussion about user fees? I think that's what that's going to be. I'm not a farmer, <laughs> but I'm very much in favor of this. It's a good yeah. program. Yeah. 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 I just want to share that with y'all because the cost is like everything else going up. We've got to keep our eyes on it. Uh, Absolutely. This goes to uh, media. We had a special, we had a Zoom meeting the other day. Uh, make sure everybody's aware of our schedules and everything because we are going to have the, uh, uh, let me just read it again. So our first regularly scheduled meeting, fiscal court meeting in December would be December the 5th at 9 a.m. at the courthouse, just like always. A public hearing for PUD application 2704 for Lux Co. Incorporation will be December the 11th at 6 p.m. at the Civic Center. That's the only thing on that agenda is a public hearing. I heard at a public hearing since we're a court, do we have to say it's for us? Because it's going to be a court. Well, yeah, it's advertised. Yeah, you already voted for it. 
It's yeah. okay. Yeah, it's technically a special meeting for us, but it's a public hearing for the. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we've advertised. Yeah. We got to do all that. That's real. Nice. I could have got it in after we had our last meeting in time, but it would have really pushed me, and I didn't want to get no pushback. Y'all about drove me nuts. I didn't know if we was having the meeting, wasn't having the meeting. Going to have five meetings. Going to have eight meetings. I didn't know what was going. He's the only one less tech proficient than me. I don't know about that. I think he's disguising it. it just, <laughs> I'd like, see it on my phone, throw my phone down. It's about like when you talk to your wife and you listen to them and say, can I hear you, honey? Huh? <laughs> she said, I don't do that. that. I was going to say, you better do it. So then we have our, like I say, the second regularly scheduled fiscal work meeting is uh, December the 19th at the courthouse here, just like, just like always. So trying to get everybody cleared up on that, and Jim and the media. And, uh, Pete and everybody, so there's the letter, you have to read it, copy it, whatever. Just just for what we can expect of y'all here. The hearing's the 5th, we have a meeting the 6th, correct? Yes. Alright, are we going to make a decision on the 6th or are we going to wait till the 9th? Well, the 11th. Well, the 11th, yes. Yes. Oh. Well, I'm going to ask I'm you. Yeah, you, you, got you, you got me. me. Yeah, here's the 11th. The 11th, and what I'm asking everybody is, we'll take you know, you can decide your decision and we're going to vote on it on December the 19th. That's what I, that's what okay. we need to do. That's what I need. Mean. Okay. We have to make a decision by Christmas Day. Yeah, but 25th so is our 90 days, so we got to make sure it's done before that. I just want to make sure everybody understands it and we'll be fair to everybody. Uh, but we won't be discussing it other than to vote on it on the 19th. All the discussion will happen at the hearing. Correct. We want to have a public discussion no. about. Oh, about we we can discuss it. We can discuss it amongst ourselves. Right, right. We can discuss it the same way as the public hearing. Right, but I'm yeah. saying we won't be inviting the public into the 19th to just talk about no. that. We'll be voting. No, on no, you, you can have a public discussion at the 19th as well. You know, if, if if you decide to do this, if you decide that you don't want to vote the same night of the hearing, your your voting should table the decision until the 19th. Right. Well, you can still have discussion on it as you're just on the 19th, just between you all. Right. No evidence or testimony. Right, right, right. So when it comes to public comments at the sign-in, will they be able to sign in and make comments about this during public comments? That all has that's what we need to make very clear to the public. We won't be accepting any more testimony from the public. We've got to follow the KRS 100 statute, okay. so that's clear. I think everybody should be aware of that. But We'll have to watch it and make sure we follow the rules. The, uh, let me see here. I don't want to say this. Pursuant to, this is a Nuss County Judge Executive Order that we put out today. Pursuant to KRS 67.710, which grants executive authority to the Judge Executive and a sufficient level of precipitation that Sufficient level of, of rain <laughs> yeah. has fallen in the area over the last 24 hours. Hazardous conditions have dropped to a level where the threat of accidental fires is low. Therefore, the previous executive order initiating a burn ban dated November the 7th, 2023, is hereby repealed. And that's, we had, you know, anywhere from an inch and a half to three inches of rain all over the county, which is great. Uh, and we'll just watch it, monitor it. Hopefully, we won't have to do that again. Uh, but I'm still asking everybody to be dang on careful with the fires. Uh, we did have a, several in the last two weeks. Okay, what else we got? That, that, that. The Fairgrounds Committee met uh, last week. And we're actually going to go visit some places to get some ideas about uh, what they're doing, how successful they are. The um, planning and zoning schedule, because there's a lot on their agenda, a whole lot on their agenda actually. Just going to put this out here for everybody to see. It's nothing I have to really present, but there's, there's a lot here, initial uses and so on, so I will leave them out there if anybody wants to see them. And I ask you to see them. That's give a them summary on this, right? Yeah, they give it to you, okay. Yeah. And let's see. I think this is Chip. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Anybody got any questions for me? I'll make a motion. So I need a motion during the executive session. I'll make that motion. Motion from Adam. Second. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Take a five minute break, please. And then make a motion that we come back into regular session. Second. Motion by Adam, second by John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Motion, motion to adjourn. By John. Second. Second by Jeff. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.